All right, what's going on, party people? It's your favorite pundits on the internet. This is your man, Professor Neil. I'm signing on with the casual ran. What up, though? Austin Jared. Peace. We are Sans Coach Dave, but we make up the pundits of pugilism. We want to welcome y'all to Pop Talk for a very special episode as we uh, move into um, Mexican Independence Day and the big fight of this weekend, which is your boy, Canelo Saul Alvarez, who is defending his uh, 168 belts against your boy, Edgar Belanga. So we are going to uh, we are going to give our pundit picks, but we also are going to weigh in on our opinion if this is actually a kind of a, a, a worthy fight for Canelo at this point um, in thinking about his his legacy and what it may do for his legacy. And then also uh, where he um, does his natural progression after this, you know, for Canelo. He's um he's fairly young. I believe, I believe he's 34 years old, but you have to remember this guy's been fighting professionally since he was uh, 16. So uh with that said, and it looks like we have a special guest that's coming in. Uh oh. Is it uh it's not it's not Fuji, right? Is it no, Fuji no, no, is coming no, in? No, no, Fuji is Coach hey, Dave hey. decided to make an appearance. What's going on? Oh, what's up, Dave? You, you, Dave, you, you, you're muted. You're muted, coach. Oh, look, look, he got uh, Javar with him. Coach, you're muted. Uh, so it looks like y'all in the gym putting in work. Always, yeah. baby, always working. What's yeah, good? Man. What's going on? What's good? Oh, what's good? Call it, man. I'm just saying what's up. Good seeing you, man. Good seeing you, bro. Yo, always, dog. It's our 130 pound. Bilal Mustafa. <laughs> I say. Salute, man. Peace, peace. Keep huh? up the hard work, man. Stay with those guys, man. You, you're going to see big things, big teams, big teams. So, so. We try to get man. Hey, man, I just want to say what's up to the, to the fellas, man. All right, but, but, but before we let you go, we'll, we'll go ahead and let you give your pundit pick. We're, we're just going to – we're focusing on one fight, uh, Canelo Alvarez against uh, Edgar Belanga. Um, who you got and then what round and what manner uh, for this fight? Hey man, I got, I got, I got, uh, I got uh, Canelo man uh, by stoppage, man. I'm thinking about. You got a stoppage? Uh -uh. Yeah, bro. I'm honestly thinking about maybe the fifth round, man. If if Belanga come out there with all them big hard shots, man, and get tired, that's Ooh. just my take on. It. All right, man. We gonna we 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 gonna document that and um you know have that in the, in the, the pun and picks. All right, there. So yeah, you got Canelo man. fifth round stoppage. No doubt, no doubt. All right, now, fellas. All right, man. Y'all take care, man. Good see you, right, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. All right. What up, Randy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that was a nice little pop in. Uh, so b before we get into our pundit picks, um, let's kind of talk about the validity of this fight. So um, to me, this was I was not a fan of this fight. Uh, I'm not sure too many people were. Um, you know, one of the main reasons is because of that Mexican monster that was waiting in, in the wings and David Benavides, who didn't get an opportunity for this fight. And then also because of where Edgar Belanga is at this point in um, in his career. Um, he, he did come out as a bit of a kind of a, a phenom um, you know, at first he was somebody who um I believe he won was it his first 16 fights by by KO? I think uh, it might have been I think it might have been more than that, but it was uh, a real kind of inflated record. I mean, them guys he knocked out, a lot of those guys were I mean, it wasn't it, I, I never thought much of it at the time, man. He was yeah. the same way this kid uh uh Abdullah Abdullah Ibrahim. Not not Abdullah mm -hmm. Ibrahim. What's my man's name? The kid from uh the lightweight from Ohio was knocking out everybody. Abdullah uh Abdullah Abdullah Mason. Mason, yeah. Abdullah Mason. It's the same shit with this kid. Like, great, he's knocking out a bunch of fucking guys just inside of the top fifty or top one hundred. I mean, 
what is like, what does it mean? Like, I, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean a whole lot to me right now. Uh, same thing with Belaka. But anyway, go ahead. I know you you're still monologuing there. No, no, no. But it was but it, it was it because he's twenty two and zero with seventeen knockouts. So he did have his first sixteen fights were all knockouts. But then okay. after that, he had uh, five. I mean, one, two, three, four, five straight de decisions. Once he stepped up and any for any kind of competition. And then, but he did have a knockout in his last fight uh, against a pretty nondescript opponent in Pedrich McCrory, who was undefeated. Um, but if you kind of dive into his 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 record or whatnot, he was um, he was eighteen and zero at the time. Uh, but he was he was thirty six he was thirty six year, years old at the time from Ireland. And really had nobody uh, of note on his record, so it was somebody that, um, you know, that had a, a bit of an inflated record that they kind of served up to Edgar Belanga as a way to, I guess, prop up this fight. Um, technically, I've never been really impressed with Edgar um, Belanga. I think that he was able to um, gain some cachet from the fact that he w was from New York. He, you know, his nationality is Puerto Rican, but he's this guy's got born and born and bred in Brooklyn, um, New York, uh, which is something that uh, Oscar De La Hoya was uh, quick to point out. And uh, he also stated that uh, Edgar Belanga doesn't doesn't have, um, you know, the, the Puerto Ricans, you know, um, um, but, but behind him or whatnot, which I can, uh, I can sense this is not, this is not a, 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 a reincarnation of Tino Trinidad, um, who was um, a, a very, you know, was a somebody who kind of wore the Puerto Rican flag on his back and was very passionate about, um, you know, supporting that land. Um, but at the same time, this is the fight that we have, and you know, we'll kind of. We'll, we'll we'll bring in the casual ran. Is is this? Do, do you think that this is a um, valid fight, or do you think this is more of a farce? Um, as we look at um, Canelo, and you know, as he gets towards the end of his career. I mean, everybody knows this is a farce of a fight, man. Uh, Berlanga didn't fight anyone in the top ten to deserve to even be considered for a fight. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Boston called it out like a year ago where we saw the movements and, and how, how the how the chessboard was being played, um, how, how he was getting in position to, to be a Canelo uh, opponent. Canelo's at the point of his career, I don't think he's going to take another challenging fight. Um, I think last week I heard rumors of him talking about, yeah, if, if the money was right, he'll fight uh, McGregor uh, uh, so, or some shit like that. So that just tells me he's not a serious opponent anymore. Uh, I think uh, the IB, who was it, the IBF uh, did the right thing by stripping him uh, of the belt before this fight. I, I wish the rest of the uh, sanctioning bodies did the same and, and just, just start stripping him, man, because this, this fight is, is technically bullshit. Um, it, it would be, it would have been, it would have been all right being a, a Mexican holiday fight against a Puerto Rican um, if if Canelo was still fighting the best of the best and he just took this one off. But the last, what, three or four fights from Canelo has been the same, man. He's just not fighting the best or he's not defending the belt uh, be against the best. He fought an old Triple G. Okay. But since then, it's it just been garbage, man. So, and then what, what's pissing me off as a boxing fan is now you inviting the uh UFC to take over the Mexican holiday. Now he got they got their uh uh spear fight today also and now everybody's talking about which one would be the better uh better event. If if Canelo was truly fighting a challenging uh opponent, this wouldn't be no contest. Yeah they so they do um have the um USC Noche um tonight at the um spear um, one of the things, and this was um, Dana White was not particularly happy because apparently um, MGM has essentially guaranteed the gate um, for this fight. So I guess apparently even if it doesn't um, sell out, they're going to um, kind of supplement the funding for what the gate would, would bring in. 
Um, but I, that just kind of speaks uh, speaks to their um, how they're be, be beholden to uh, Canelo, and then making sure that he's happy um, and is able to keep this date. Um, I'm not I'm not too uh, well I'm not too upset with them doing that. Um, Canelo is a is is a Mexican. Um, the UFC Noche, I mean, it does feature a lot of um, Mexican fighters. Um, however, the, the the main event uh, features um, a guy named Sean O'Malley uh, against um, Merav um, Derichelli, who's neither one of them are kind of <laughs> right. me a, a Mexican at all. So, um, but um, this this has kind of um, highlighted the. Um, the rift between Oscar De La Hoya and it seems that I guess really Oscar's becoming a, a a bit of a villain when it comes to boxing because uh, he's already he's already had his issues with um, on Canelo Alvarez and he actually said he's going to attend the UFC uh, oh, wow. Noche yeah. <laughs> even though him and uh, Dana White yeah are... Turkey Alasek Turkey Alasek also is going to be at the yeah. Yeah. Well, he, UFC yeah, event right kind yeah, of like yeah, well, in an act of well, defiance, of right? An act of, of an act of protest uh, yeah, yeah. against uh, against this fight. You know, it, what, it, I don't what, know how this significant is it's all going to end up being, but it, it's it's still it's it says something. It does, and this and and let's be clear, this this is part of Riyadh season, and I think that um, so apparently um, the USC has has poured in almost twenty million dollars already and I think that they they turned to Turkey Alashik as a way to help them bail out and um just kind of break even with that. Um but th this is part of Riyadh season um which was originally I, I don't I don't believe that was the case. Um but I also want to go to the fact that Randy did bring up a good point that this is not um for the undisputed um middle a super middleweight title which um are you Elanga sure? Longer has done. Yeah, yeah but it's I, not. It's, it's, it's because the IBF stripped him once he decided to. Um, oh, that's right. He didn't that's fight right. William Skull. Yeah. So this is not for the undisputed. Um, at the same time, so. Well, that was never a factor for Belanga, right? He, Belanga just wanted yeah, the opportunity, wanted right? And that was never, ever, uh, that was never, ever on the table. I mean, if this fight were for no belts at all, Belonga would have would have passed up a shot at any belt to get a shot at Canelo, and from a business standpoint, uh, makes sense. Also professionally, right? It's 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 a it's a smart move, but yeah, I forgot all about that. I'm glad that you mentioned that that the IBF had stripped uh, had stripped Canelo. Yeah, still three so, titles. Three titles ain't ain't bad. That's that you know. Yeah. That's not. I mean, you know, there's there's still there are still stakes here. Right. No, I mean, yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I mean, the 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 belt is the Canelo Alvarez. I mean, he he's the one that kind of super. He's he's still one of the top fighters, mm -hmm. um, one of the top draws in boxing. And if Edgar Belanga is able to defeat Canelo Alvarez, he automatically becomes a star in the sport. Um, Even if the fight is close. Yeah. So even, even if you know, this fight is close, it's, it, yeah. does, it does yeah, that, it does, and, and it does wonders to his career. And that's the danger that I think going to happen, almost like a, a Munguia fight. But like I think, I think Canelo carried Munguia a lot of those rounds. So I think that I think that Canelo might carry Berlanga the same. So he so so not to get criticized if if, if Canelo goes in there and waxes in three rounds, it, it's just going to be more scores and scores and scores of boos. Because he, we know that Berlanga wasn't supposed to be in in that fight. Now, if the fight goes to a, a UD, then then you can say, okay, Berlanga was good enough to be to compete with with Canelo. But my my argument is with Canelo because over the last two years, when you brought when he brought up Benavidez's name, it's like, what has he done? He hasn't done nothing. Y'all fighters need to fight each other so y'all can get a chance at me. But he hand picks. He just goes in the crowd and pick up Berlanga out of nowhere. A dude that hasn't done shit. It, yeah, it, well, McGee, yeah, McGee wasn't even. That was the first time McGee fought at one sixty eight, right? No, I, 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 I believe he like maybe one other time. Oh, no, no, he fought. He fought Derevianchenko. He yeah, fought Derevianchenko at one sixty eight. I believe. Before, okay, yeah. but he wasn't a top ten opponent either at the time. 
Oh, I mean, he was, he was more, no, of, a, he was he was more wasn't. Of, a, of a legitimate opponent than oh, Edgar yeah, Belanger. Yeah, Durbin yeah. Was yeah he was, but uh, I still say Munguia Mung won't shit, but he was he was a more deserving fighter than than Berlaven. <laughs> yes, but both of them wasn't the top yes. in the division at the time. So so Canelo keep no. yelling that the, all these all these other deserving fighters haven't fought anybody and they don't deserve to fight him. But yet, and still, he finds like lesser opponents to give that opportunity to, and and then all these fighters, those are like ten million dollar fights for these fighters. So, so I, in, in perspective, it, I, it's just some bullshit. It, it's bullshit. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's definitely like changing. Yeah. I I don't I don't think that I don't, I think y'all giving Canelo too much credit about <laughs> carrying fighters. I think that if if Canelo, I think Canelo, he hasn't had a knockout since twenty twenty one. If if he, I think well, that if I he never, can, I never be, said that. I, I haven't seen I, I, I haven't that. seen Canelo Alvarez fight in almost two years. When was the b ball fight? The year ago, b ball two fight, and a half years ago. Yeah, the, the b ball fight was in um, um, May of twenty two. Okay, yeah. So I almost two years now. I haven't watched Canelo Alvarez. Fight. So I have no idea if he's carrying these guys or not. Did he carry Charlo and uh, and no, I mean, uh, what about the kid uh, Ryder? Did... Ryder? No, I mean, I don't. I don't think he carried Ryder. I think hey, that, he might I have mean... carried uh, Charlo. I, why? I don't think... why? 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 Carry Charlo. Okay. Why would? Why wouldn't Canelo want to get these guys out of there and have a devastating knockout? I mean, what does he benefit from? Well, I mean, yeah, what does he benefit from doing it? I mean, he was just walking them down, just just hitting them with body shots. He he hasn't he hasn't just really like been after people lately. You know what I'm saying? He has the ability to go after you. You know what I'm saying? Especially if he's not hurt. Nobody's hurt him. Well, the interesting thing, you know, and I was talking about this when I was leaving the barbershop with guys. I told folks that 168 pounds is not an optimal weight for him. And his output at 168 pounds uh, has never been high. I mean, when I watched him fight Plant and I watched him fight uh, Callum Smith and all those other guys at 168, he can't throw as many punches as he as he needs to at that at that way. Even against Billy Joe Saunders, man, he, he, he his punch output was relatively low, and I think that has to do with his fighting weight. I mean, he's he he's what is he five seven and some change or something like that. Uh, He's rehydrating to who knows how high. I just I just don't know that 168 pounds is optimal for him. He's probably a 160 pound fighter. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that that output is not going to be there. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the same thing in this fight: two, three, four, five big shots and and per round, and 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 that'll probably be it. We'll Which see. Which speaks though. to why somebody like uh, Bivol, who does have a, a high output. Um, was able to really do a, a number on, on on Canelo Alvarez, and, and with that said, so um, at the at the weigh in, as we kind of talked about, one thing that I, I will give Edgar um, Belango credit is that this was the um, really the most cut that I've seen him um, in a fight. He usually has kind of a softer looking body, uh, so you can tell that. Um, he realizes that this is, uh, as Oscar De La Hoya pointed out, uh, this may be his one and only pay-per-view fight. And he's taking it seriously as far as his training and getting into his the top shape that he can be in. I thought Canelo Alvarez, even though, so they they, they both weighed under 167 pounds. Um, I thought Canelo looked a little... I don't know, like frumpy, kind of soft or whatnot. And um, when they when when they stood next to each other, the uh, height discrepancy was was very um, um, pronounced uh, in favor of Bay Longa. Um, but I don't think that that really means anything. I I think that um, for somebody who is um, twenty seven years old, I think that Edgar Bay in the, in this point in his career. Um, is not really that developed and that advanced as a fighter. And I think that Canelo is really going to do a number on him. 
I'm not. I, I think if he can get him out there, that it, he wants to look spectacular. If he could knock this guy out um, in uh, what are you doing? Uh, kind of a fashion oh, like a, 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 a Amir Khan, I think that he would do that. Um, I'm just not sure that um, he has that that ability um, at this point in his career and at this weight. So what we're gonna do is just kind of. Um, go and give our pundit picks so give a little so before our pundit picks we're just going to give a little bit of a kind of prediction on how the fight is going to play out and then at the end of that um just um give us your pundit pick if you're picking a, a knockout um please give us the round so just real quick for those who are into the um betting of the sport um could Canelo is a sizable favorite at negative two thousand, uh, meaning that to to get back a hundred dollars, you would have to place a bet of two thousand dollars. And Edgar Belanga comes back as a plus nine hundred underdog, meaning that a bet of a hundred dollars will get you um, nine hundred dollars if he wins. So it's, I'm 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 not going to go through the breakdown of like rounds and this that. I'm just giving the the kind of general um odds for this fight. Um, but we'll um, we'll start with the casual ran. I'll go next, and then we'll we'll, we'll end with uh, Boston Jared. Yeah. So, like I said, I I, I think that Canelo's going to carry him. Um, not I don't think he's going to carry him to a UD. Um, I, I think Berlanga just isn't good enough. I mean, he's going to get caught, and then I think get knocked out in the tenth. I think Canelo's going to try to carry him. Uh, fill them out, start slow to the fifth, and then just start working them, carrying them. Uh, I mean, to the fifth, and then start working them and carrying them. And then he, Berlango's just going to slip up and walk into something and, and and get knocked out. All right, so you got a fifth round KO for Ten. your boy Ten. Canelo. Ten. Tenth round, excuse me, excuse me. I'm, I'm thinking about coach, so we, we need to make sure we recognize. So coaches, fifth round knockout Canelo. Uh, casual ran is tenth round knockout. So I'm going to say that um, this isn't going to be much of a com competitive fight, I don't think. I think that um, Baylonga's size and youth will pose some uh, a, a bit of a puzzle just at the beginning that, um, that it will take Canelo uh, maybe about three or four rounds to solve. I could see Canelo getting a knockdown at some point in this fight. I'm 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 thinking that it'll actually probably come from a a body shot actually, um, but I don't think that he'll get the knockout. I, I think that uh, with Canelo, he um, has kind of lost the kind of courage that sometimes that it takes. So if he has an opponent um, hurt in in a sense like that, that he knows that. Um, he won't he won't take those chances at, at this point in his career because he just doesn't um he just doesn't want to get hit or or open himself up to any kind of counters. Um so I think that he'll kind of push around like the tenth or eleventh round to see if I can get him out of there. And I think that Belanga, his Puerto Rican pride, will see him through and that we'll see another um uh, kind of uninspiring unanimous decision for Canel uh for um Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. I, I was gonna say the same thing. You guys are you guys are receiving me, right? Yeah, yeah. Loud and clear. Good. Picture. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I'm I'm with Cam on this one. I was gonna go with UD. I, I, I think that the one thing that Edgar Belanga has going for him in this fight as far as his, as far as advantages are concerned is his is his size and his natural strength. I mean, he's a big kid at 168 pounds. He's got the frame of a got the frame of a cruiserweight. Um, mm -hmm. He's a real big kid, and I think at the very least that is going to allow him to take the punches from Canelo very very well. That coupled with the fact that Canelo, as I pointed out earlier, his uh, his his punch volume uh, is not what it needs to be uh, at 168 pounds. Um, so yeah, I, I think that I think that Belanga does go the distance. I think that this fight will have some real, real lackluster moments. I think the high points of this fight are the points in the fight where 
I think Belanga is going to try to make this a street fight. I think really that's the only chance he has. Um, he's not some technical boxer. He, he's not looked at from being honest. He, he's just not a very, he's not very good. He's a very, very average fighter. Um, mm -hmm. He has the height, he has the size, but I have never seen evidence of him demonstrating the acumen to use his, to use his height and, and, and to use his size. And if he has, it's been against pretty nondescript opponents. I, I, I saw a little bit of the McCrory fight. I watched the, 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 the Quigley fight only to see how he did in comparison to Andrade. He ended up going the distance with Quigley, didn't he? He did. He yeah. did, and, and Demetrius tore this guy's jaw off of his face, like literally tore this guy's jaw off his face in like three rounds. Uh, but Andre can't get the fight. But that's that's neither that's neither <laughs> here nor there. Um, yeah, I think Edgar Berlanga's size and his strength carry him through to the twelfth round. That along with Canelo's lack of output. Um, I I I will say this: I, I don't think that Canelo can sit there and just take the high guard and take shots against this guy. He he's got to if he's going to close the distance, he's got to he's got to tick tock and rock his way in there, uh, and he's got to do so behind a jab, I guess. But I don't think he can sit there, take that high guard, and let this kid tee off on him. I, I think that you know, yeah, the size and the strength, the kid does has shown he's got pretty decent power. Uh, I mean, you know, and I'll bring this up only because I brought up the 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 Quigley versus um, the Quigley versus Berlanga performance. But as an example of how styles make fights, Demetrius Andrade put in a relatively nondescript performance against Demond Nicholson, where mm -hmm. Berlanga dropped Nicholson five or six times in that fight. So yeah, you know, that just you know the whole triangle theory in boxing, you know, necessarily. Uh, doesn't necessarily work out. Styles do make fights. Uh, Bilaga has shown he's got good power, uh, despite the lack of skill and lack of boxing acumen. So yeah, I think that this he limps his way to a twelve round decision in a fight where you'll see folks at ringside looking at their phones more than you'll see them actually looking at what's going on in the ring. In, in my opinion. Ouch! That's a that's a for the record for the record that's here. That's a stinging indictment. <laughs> yes. And for the record, the only reason I'm watching this fight is because I, I plan on being out at an event. It's CBC weekend here in D.C. I plan on being out at an event, and the fight will be on. Otherwise, I would have no interest in watching this fight. I would watch the Laura Garcia fight. I plan on watching the Laura Garcia fight and then turning that shit off after the Laura Garcia fight was over. And I do want to see how Stephen Fulton looks. I haven't seen, we haven't seen Stephen Fulton since the, um, the anyway fight, right? The massacre, yeah. The in a way, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 that's the first time. So, I, I am curious to see how Stefan Fulton looks. I believe he's moving up in weight, so yeah, I had no interest in, in watching this uh, this fight though, yeah. And to note, um, this fight is um, $90 on the, the zone pay per view, which is ridiculous. Um, no, Amazon. It's on Amazon. Well, the, well, it's it's also available on the um, the zone as well. Um, well, if you it, live it is, in like if you live in like Tanzania or some shit like that, then you okay. be able to watch it on the zone. I don't. I don't think that. Uh, I don't think that if you're an American subscriber to the zone, I don't think you'll be able to watch this fight. Even on pay per view? Are you sure? No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, okay, so okay. I, if double double check us, but, in the, in yeah, the yeah, but it, it is. But you you are correct. It is right. on available on Prime, um, pay per view as well. Um, and and then just we we won't really kind of go over the fights because they're uh, they're not really good matches. But um, you did bring up that um, Israelon the uh, Lara is taking on Danny Garcia for the WBA middleweight title. Um, Caleb Plant is taking on Trevor McCombie. Rolando Romero is taking on Manuel um, um, Jimenez. And Stephen Fulton is taking on Carlos Castro uh, at Featherweight. Um, so there's some there's some notable fighters that are um, that are on there that are not um, going um, that are not really in good matchups. Um, but it should give you something. I, I don't believe it's worth the ninety dollar um, kind of price tag on it, um, particularly because of the very, very underwhelming 
um main event. This is this is uh this is fucking uh PBC's latest like uh subway hustle, you know, like you see the guy on the on the subway, he's playing, he's doing three card Monty one week, and then the next week he's yeah. doing the fucking uh the little cup game where you gotta pick the the which 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 ball is the cup under, right? This is PBC yeah. throwing a bunch of names we all recognize and know onto a card and against opponents that no one's ever fucking heard of before. I mean, we know Lara and Garcia, but the guy Fulton's fighting, the guy Ro Roley is fighting. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, come on. And the guy Plant is fighting. I keep hearing about this guy, McCombie, and that he won all these national titles, and he hasn't gotten the promo. He'd be a lot bigger than he is now if he had gotten the promo. I, has anybody here, have you guys ever seen the term McCombie fight? Like, who was this guy McCombie fought? No. Which don't mean he's not good. That doesn't mean he's not good. It's just, but like for a ninety dollar pay per view, like Canelo Belanga, uh, uh, yeah, okay, Puerto Rico versus Mexico, sure. But the rest of those fights are, it's a uh, it's smoke and mirrors, man. Like you know these, I, I know some of these guys, but I don't know the guys that are fighting. Like like Cam said, it's it's uh yeah, well, whatever. It is. It's. I mean, it's um, disappointing. But I mean, let's. I've. I'm. I'm kind of at my wits' end when it comes to uh, Canelo Alvarez, and um, I mean, I, I haven't really been intrigued for any of his fights in about um, three years, and I haven't been impressed uh, for about that um, same amount of time. I think the last. You know, I do give him credit for stopping Caleb Plant and for breaking. Uh, Billy Joe Saunders face but after that I think that he's kind of uh, he's somebody that's just kind of tucked in his you know his, his weapon and um, who best wins in his career yeah would you okay. say so would you would you guys would you guys say so two best wins of this guy's career are Caleb Plant who at the time had a, a prospect level resume and a guy in Billy Joe Saunders who I rated to be to be clear I yeah. rated Billy Joe Saunders mm -hmm. I picked Billy Joe Saunders to win that fight and uh you know what Billy Joe has got a, a a Chris Eubanks win and uh a Willie Monroe who's a friend of the show but he's yeah. he's got a Willie Monroe win and a fight that I thought Willie Monroe could have got the nod in mm -hmm. um so when, when, when these and, and I bring that up because not to keep you guys any longer than you, than you want to be here, but I, look, I mean, this this topic comes up constantly about Canelo Alvarez and his legacy and greatest Mexican fighter ever, this, that, and the third. And it's like, well, what criteria are we using? Because if we stack up Canelo Alvarez's strength of opposition against Juan Manuel Marquez or even Julio Cesar Chavez or an Eric Morales, like... Even a Salvador Sanchez, who we See, never... That's what ever, I was going to say. Yeah, he, he I, never, ever got the best years of. Or Finito Lopez. And I you know Finito Lopez is a guy that fought in a nondescript weight even back then in, in, in the golden years of boxing. Those 118, 120 pounds. I get it, but Finito Lopez, technically, in my opinion, still a top two or three Mexican fighter of all time. Where does Canelo's resume, his strength of opposition, stack up against a guy like Julio Cesar Chavez or a guy like Marquez. Does, uh, does yeah, and Salvador like, Sanchez, I think that a lot of people are really underestimating. And I think who is Canelo Alvarez's Wilfredo Gomez? Cuz Salvador Sanchez knocked out Wilfredo Gomez, who was the the boogeyman at that time in boxing, knocking out everybody. I believe Wilfredo Gomez had 100% knockout ratio at the time of that fight he had knocked out every single person maybe one or two guys he azuma had nelson out. i mean that was like that was an undefeated azuma nelson. that was an undefeated azuma nelson a, a kind of unheralded azuma nelson at that time at but time, still yeah look i think that his triple g win as controversial as it was the first two I think that maybe stacks up to the Azuma Nelson, but again, Sanchez. Really, Scott which Nelson. which which one? His because he lost that. You talking about? Oh, uh, I, well, I guess the, the 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 second fight. The second one. The second one. The second one. The second one. Uh, you know, because tri Triple G going into that fight probably had had better names, 
And I, I, I look, I rate Triple G above an Azuma Nelson skills wise. I saw the best of Triple G as an amateur. Uh, I know how good Triple G was. Um, yeah, Azuma Nelson, you know, very, very solid fighter. But I, I don't think that um, I think I think he's got Canelo has got some Azuma Nelson level guys, but definitely not a Gomez level. Not not the quality of that win. That win at that time was was crazy. I mean, it catapulted him to the top of the pound for pound list. He died shortly after that fight, didn't he? Then he crashed his car. He died shortly after the Wilfredo Gomez fight. No, no, at the the, the Nelson fight at the Azuma Nelson. Sorry, fight. after the Azuma Nelson fight. After the Azuma Nelson fight. Yeah. Wait, you sure? I thought he fought yeah, yeah. Gomez. Okay. No, no, he he fought uh, he fought um, Gomez probably about three fights before that, but it, this last fight was Azuma Nelson, and then I think he died almost right after that fight. Didn't he uh, stop Danny Lopez, Lopez too? Stop Danny, Danny Lopez. Lopez. Stop Danny Lopez, Lopez on there, like yeah, man, yeah. like come on, come on, yeah, yeah. So I get it. He's got the accolades, undisputed, blah blah blah. But who's gonna remember Callum Smith coming in there looking like a Holocaust? Uh, survivor uh billy joe uh caleb plant like these are his best wins maybe austin trout is maybe his one b i was i maybe. was gonna yeah i was gonna put that up there um but i would you know, i would maybe slightly put the um plant and um saunders fights above that but i mean those are i mean those are probably his his two most impressive well, his three most impressive fights, um, in, in my opinion. And Trout's Trout is up there only because of the the Cotto win, right? Because because Plant uh, Trout lost every single fight he fought after that. I mean, Heard, Lara, yeah. both Charlos, and I and I respect Trout. Um, but yeah, I, how good was that win, really? In hindsight, yeah, I don't, I don't even know if it is. We still got to see what Caleb Plant does. Caleb Plant goes out here and goes life and death with this guy tonight. Or if he like, I, I don't see Plant having much success at 175. This guy Plant is going to be a career 168 pounder, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Unless that division 175 really, really clears out. Uh I, I just don't, I just don't see him being a I just don't know, man. Julio Cesar Chavez, you know, as limited of a fighter as he was skills wise those guys he fought but there's no way around those names on there like look at those guys that has fought man canelo don't have any of those guys not the wins anyway mm -hmm. so yeah anyway all right well we will um we will look to have a show where we can kind of come in um with our reactions uh to this fight and then we'll see what pundits um, had it on the head when it comes to our predictions. Um, but it, this will give us an opportunity to really see where Canelo stands at um, in his career. And then um, I'll, I'll be kind of keen to see what he, um, what name he calls out um, after his pr presumed victory, which we think that he's going to get. Um, but um, we'll see. But um We'll look to get in a show, uh, another show before the weekend is over. But with that said, um, this is your man, Professor Nels. I'm signing off for Boston Jared. Peace. The Casual Ran. Peace. Peace out to Coach Dave. Make sure that you like and subscribe and tune in for the next episode of Pop Talk.